Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mindful Homestead. My name is Jack. I've done a lot of videos on the past on our channel about our pigs and how awesome and rewarding it's been to be raising pigs here on the homestead. On today's video though, I wanna switch it up a little bit and talk about what I've come to realize are some of the precautions and, and worrisome things about raising really what I personally consider to be the most dangerous animal you can have on your small farm or homestead aside from maybe a bull. I'm gonna hop in the tractor over here. We're gonna head down. We're gonna pull the feeder out from the pig pen and bring it back up here to get him fed. And I'll talk a little bit about what I actually mean when I say that. getting me all covered in pig mud before I went to work. Um, it took a little bit longer, but it was, you know, cleaner. Actually waiting for my feed guy to grind up a ton of pig feed for us. So they're getting bag feed today from Tractor Supply. So I've been pulling the feeder out to feed them and I started doing it because it was cleaner. But now with the pigs getting so close to processing time and them being so much bigger than they were early on, I'm doing it this way now because it's just safer for me. See, there's a lot of ways that pigs can injure you on the homestead. They're, they're a pretty dangerous animal overall. And if I can mitigate some of that danger by feeding them this way, I'm gonna do that. Let's head back down, get this feeder back in the enclosure and I'll show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. I guess I could've just set the camera up for this, but I'll try and film it. Oh, out from under. They're preoccupied with food right now, so I'm gonna hop in here and not be too worried about it. As you can see right now, I've got 10 pretty large pigs around me. These guys are live weight right now. <sighs> North of 300 on almost all of them, I'm saying. One or two of the small ones might be 290. That one right there with its butt kind of toward the camera is probably the smallest, is that? Yeah, we actually, that one was named Sweetie because it was the littlest one when we got them too. Uh, but we've got half and half here. 
We've got big red. We've got another kind of spotted big red over there. You can see I'm giving them plenty of space. Um, these pigs right now at 300 pounds, we'll say 300 pound live weight, it doesn't take much for them to knock me over, to push me around. I'm a 300 pound dude, I'm big, but all of that is sitting on top of legs. I'm high, my center of gravity is high. These guys are low slung, they're low riders. So if they're getting excited and they wanna, you know, kind of come see who I am and, you know, investigate me whenever I come into the pen, it's really easy for them to, to do some damage to my legs, do some damage to my knees, knock me over, you know, without even realizing that that's what they're doing. They're kind of like a big dog that doesn't realize it's a big dog. It still thinks it's a puppy. So right off the bat, when you're gonna be around these guys, when they're this big, you don't wanna take your eyes off them. You wanna be cognizant of where they are. You know, I'm just kind of touching this pig right here to let it know I'm here. I'm keeping an eye on it and all the others. Um, you know, that's just kind of basic common sense safety when you're working with an animal that can grow this big. If you're going to be in their area, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to them and where they are and, and controlling behavior. Now, if I wasn't focusing solely on them right now and filming this video, if I had something in this paddock that I wanted to do, I need to be even more cognizant of what's going on. You might remember a few years back when we were running pigs on the back half of the property, I went out early November, right around this time of year, to build a shelter for some pigs. How do I look? Do I have a fat lip right now? Uh, a little bit right there. Ooh. I've just been inside for probably the last hour. And as you can see, the pigs, they're using the straw. Um, there was an injury. So this tree that's right here was in the way of the tarp. You can see it's rubbing up against it. And I was trying to push it out of the way. And I was pushing on a branch that used to be right here. It came off and stupid me was pushing it this way and that branch snapped and this whole branch because I was pushing over here came back and clocked me right across the face here and um, I've got a fat lip you can kind of see pardon my gangly teeth parents didn't think boys needed braces growing up and you can kind of see and there, there's a pretty good gash. So, um, I probably should be going to get stitches right now. Um, mouth cuts usually don't require stitches. I can stick my tongue a pretty good bit in there. An important thing to remember through all of this is that I was out here alone and I know I always say, don't go into your pig pen alone. Because if that tree, when it swung back, had knocked me out. All right, let's be honest. I could probably take a punch, okay? I'm not gonna just fall right over. I don't have a glass jaw. But if it had knocked me out or if a branch had fallen from above and knocked me out, the pigs probably would have started eating me. You need at least 16 pigs to finish the job in one sitting, so be wary of any man who keeps a pig farm. Or at least nibbling on me trying to get a taste. Hence the expression, as greedy as a pig. If I was out cold, I wouldn't have been able to grab my cell phone. I wouldn't have been able to call Jackie and let her know, hey, come out, get the pigs off me. It would have been a big issue, like creepily large. And I'm not just saying that because Halloween's tomorrow. It would have, not something I want to think about. The incident that you just saw is one of the reasons why I'm so particular about safety around large animals. Those pigs could have very easily done major damage, if not killed me. By, by stepping on my head or my torso and, and doing grievous bodily injury that way. But they could have bit me. They could have, depending where they bit me, it had been on my ankles. It could have, you know, severed an Achilles tendon. It could have hit a major vein or artery. There could have been major problems there. And in that instance, I was still very young and naive in my scope of things to the dangers of working around hogs that are almost at full market weight. So first and foremost, the physical aspect of having a large animal on the homestead that is an animal it's relatively unpredictable you know all these guys are pretty docile but if you had a boar that was intact if you had a, a pig that just for some reason it had a hair up its back end the ability for these animals to do harm to you 
is quite easy and something you should always be cognizant of. If you're comfortable, if you're gonna be working in a pig pen alone, um, I will not dissuade anyone from potentially carrying a firearm if that's gonna be the case. Uh, if you're working with more than one person, have a plan to get the second person out of the enclosure if something were to happen, if they were to injure themselves or if they were to become knocked unconscious or something like that. Just first and foremost, be aware of the harm that pigs this size can do to a person who's not paying attention or doesn't have a plan. Because yeah, when they're little, they're cute and cuddly and I'll even let Emma in here to play with them under adult supervision, of course. But when they get to this size, we've also instilled in her that they are dangerous. She is not allowed to go in here. Obviously our fencing is relatively low key. It's just two strands of electric wire. If Emma really wanted to get in here, she could, but we've stressed to her and let her know this is not a place for her to be. And if you have kids on your homestead and you're raising hogs, I can't stress how important it is to also let them know and teach them that they're not to go in with the pigs, especially when they get to this size. While they're eating, I'm gonna take a walk across their new pasture, basically violating the rules I was just telling you to, you know, pay close special attention and don't go into the pig pen alone. Let's go over here and see some of the work they're doing for us. I'm standing on a stump right now, but you can see over here is an area that the loggers didn't stump when they came through. You can see right over here, there's a whole bunch of water. Uh, this was just a super wet spot that they were worried about getting the excavator stuck. And combined with a whole lot of time that they didn't really have, um, we were trying to get them out of here as quick as possible. They stumped all of this all over there that's green now behind the tractor, but they kind of left right here. which is totally fine. We had discussed it beforehand. It was gonna add a substantial amount of cost with diesel priced the way it was at, by the time they got to this. Um, I'm not about to like hit up and, and bankrupt small businesses because it's costing them 85 bucks an hour to run an excavator just in diesel. Uh, and they quoted me a price like six months prior. I get that it's their job to build that into inflation. And, and some people might've argued that that was on them and not me, but, um, but at the same time, it wasn't the end of the world to have this kind of small strip not stumped out. But now that I've got the pigs in here, uh, I've been throwing them extra treats later in the day, um, mostly whole corn, whole dried corn. And I've been putting it around the base of these stumps so that they, they work on them, they dig them up a little bit. While they're preoccupied over there eating their food, I'm gonna take a seat on this stump here. And uh, I guess we'll go to reason number two why, why pigs can be super dangerous on a homestead. Pigs have been used for years as an analog to humans when it comes to medical research and studying the decay of bodies, studying internal anatomy. Pigs are pretty similar to humans in a lot of ways. While it might not seem obvious right off the bat, they're a pretty good analog to humans. And part of that analogous relationship means that sometimes pigs can develop illnesses that transmit to humans. These illnesses are not uncommon in the animal world. They're called zoonotic diseases. Uh, they are essentially any pathogen that can infect or uh, colonize, I guess is the word, any, any illness where an animal can be a carrier and then it can then transmit that illness to a human, um, that is, that is zoon a zoonotic disease. With pigs, kind of the, the, the big one and the one that catches the banner that you hear about in the news and things like that is swine flu. It, it's an influenza that when contracted in humans, the symptoms present very similarly to, you know, all of your other kind of standard respiratory diseases that you see out there. The big one that came through within the last couple of years that, that caused a stir. Um, these are all forms of respiratory diseases that can be passed from animals to humans. And swine flu is, is another one that is part of that mix. While it's not something that necessarily is, is the biggest fear for somebody, 
Uh, it is something that's out there. It has caused outbreaks. It is more deadly than some of the other variants out there of respiratory flus that kind of go around. Um, so swine flu is one of those. But then you also have the standards that you really need to worry about with almost any animal. Uh, salmonella, pigs can carry salmonella just like chickens can. So right now I'm walking around their pen in my boots. If I were to take these boots off and move them with my hands and then go into the kitchen and start preparing lunch, I, I could be contaminated with salmonella and get sick from that. E. coli is another big one with pigs. Whether it's meat that has been contaminated during the slaughter and butchering process from the stomach or intestinal contents of a pig, or whether it's from you know an external source like the pig poop that is in this pen right now. Um, pigs like to shake, pigs like to splash mud, pigs like to roll around and poop and pee in their own mud. If a pig were to splash into mud and get it on me or in my face, which has happened as the underside of this hat shows, that's splashed with pig mud. If some of that was to splash into my eye or my mouth, I could potentially come down with an E. coli infection and become sick from that. So even though as homesteaders, we strive to raise our animals out on grass, we give them wide open spaces, they're not in a tiny little enclosure where they're constantly subjected to rolling around in their own filth, those type of pathogens will still exist even in an open area like this. And as homesteaders, we need to be cognizant of that. We need to pay attention to our butchering processes, make sure we're keeping clean workspaces, make sure we're taking gross boots off when we get in the house and we're washing our hands after we work with animals. I'm definitely guilty myself from time to time of having the mindset of that, oh, you know, it's just a little rub some dirt in it, it'll be fine. Uh, but really you wanna pay attention that you're not cross-contaminating surfaces. I've gotta go inside and actually I'm gonna pull something out of the freezer to cook dinner. I need to make sure I'm paying attention to keeping things clean and not getting myself or my family sick from these guys. The third and final proposition I'll make as to how pigs can be a problem on your homestead and downright dangerous is that these guys have the potential to undo every ounce of hard work that you've put into your homestead in almost an instant. One of the things I'm a huge proponent of and I've mentioned so much on the channel is getting your fencing for your pigs dialed. Uh, we use two strands of electric. We train the pigs intensively when they are little and they first come onto the farm to not want to go near that electric. And typically, we don't have any escapees. That's not to say we haven't though. How did you get out? Hey, Dobby. Here, pig, 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 pig. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? There you go, good boy. Everything always happens when Jack's at work. Right, guys? If you spend time, though, watching almost any Homestead YouTube channel, you've heard horror stories of pigs getting out and destroying the neighbor's garden beds, uh, really just kind of wrecking the place. And if you're a homestead that raises a few pigs here and there, but you put a lot of effort into raising a great veggie garden, these guys right here, they have homing beacons in their nose for delicious produce. One of the first places they'll go to if they get out of their enclosure is anything that's delicious. So whether that's a flower garden that happens to nearby that they smell in the height of summer when everything's in bloom, they'll, they'll trash it. Your garden, if you have put a whole bunch of work into a garden, they will find it. They will get in there. Even if you have a high tunnel, they could bust their way into it if they go out of their enclosure long enough before you notice. And yeah, we live in a modern world where that's not the end of it. You can go to a grocery store or a farmer's market and get the things you need to bounce back if that sort of situation happens. But if you're really trying to do the self subsistence thing and you're planning on eating just what's coming out of your garden, there's no way the 180 so pounds of meat that you put in your freezer from one pig is going to make up for the loss of an entire season of gardening. You can't get that back. And if a pig does get out and destroy your garden, that's one part of it and that's terrible. But on the flip side, let's go back to the very beginning of this video where I talked about how pigs could potentially hurt, injure, or downright kill somebody. My neighbor that way has kids on the way, little ones. If I flip around and look over here, same thing, almost every single neighbor that runs along that side of the property, there's a road on the other side, they all have kids. 
And while Emma knows not to go near the pigs, those kids don't. They might see a pig and they might think to some farm story they read in school, oh, a cute pig, and that pig could hurt them. For us, you know, everyone is relatively far away. They're not super close, so it's not as big of an issue. But if you lived in an area and you were trying to do the suburban homesteading thing, that's something you would have to pay attention to. Now, I am not saying that pigs are not something I would recommend. I would recommend pigs all day long. I think as far as a homestead animal, they are one of the best things you can raise. They provide such a variety of meat from the organs, which are organy and, and good if that's what you like, to pork chops, which are relatively mild. You've got your tenderloins, you've got ribs, which can be barbecued. You've got hams that can bacon that can be smoked. The amount of meat options that comes off one pig is enough to keep a family interested in the food they're eating for an entire year. That's huge. But I do think it's important to give this info out there. So if you're thinking about raising pigs for the first time, or you've just picked up some piglets recently and you're kind of wondering how the process is gonna go, I think this is info that should be out there and, and should be more talked about within the, the homesteading space. You'll hear it talked about amongst experienced homesteaders, how dangerous pigs can be. But when I was getting into pigs, I never heard anybody say like, just be careful of all these things because there's so much that can go wrong. As always, we appreciate you guys watching. If you like what you saw, make sure to head down below and click that subscribe button. Otherwise, I thank you for watching and I hope you're having a great day. Bye.